Hey, nice to see you again. So today we're going to be working on a bit more of something with some uh, fun cycles, materials. We're going to be working on some typography. We're going to make something like an HDRI. And I might just toss in a few tips and tricks. I'm going to try to like really edit this video to like break it down into pieces this time. So anyways, let's just like uh, jump into it. I, I got my morning coffee. Hope you got your... Uh, hydration station with you too and um fuck it let's just do it all right <clears throat> so let's dive on into it so first things first what everyone always does is we're gonna go ahead and delete the default objects that come with blender also just wanted to shout out um I believe it was stevie in the discord that mentioned hey like let's get some screen keys casting so Got some screen keys casting, so if you ever feel like you're falling behind or you want to rewind something and make sure I, you click the right key, you just look over to the left hand corner and you'll see what you need. So first things first is I'm going to introduce you to typography and playing with that in this program. So press shift A and I probably won't be repeating that too often. Uh, as you understand this and we have some text now what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate it so RX 90 degrees you type in 90 and it will drop your stuff right to 90 if not press N and you can see the rotation little trick right there so 90 degrees uh, I'm gonna keep it super simple and we're gonna go ahead and not type the same text this is my example but we're just going to call it mind wide open all right and, <clears throat> and you can see i kind of have like a reference image right down here but in your let's see the actual name of this dude i don't even know i guess it's your properties tab in your properties tab you're going to see a green uh, letter a click that and this is all your settings for your type and you're probably wondering right now what the fuck like I want to um, I want to go ahead and change the the the, the type family and <clears throat> in order to do that I'm going to show you and it's a little bit wonky so first thing let's just kind of open up our paragraph settings make the centered so we have this a little bit better and then you're gonna open up the font drop down and here's where you have your fonts and it's super I wish they kind of would have done a better job at this in blender but hey we work with what we got it's open source uh, what I like to do is I just like to use one I like to select my one font in the regular tab because that's kind of what we have it set at already so once you open up this folder kind of icon I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that is showing on the screen one second <clears throat> all right so once you have that folder icon you'll see a list of all the fonts you have installed in your computer I like to I think by default you'll be seeing it like this but what I like to do is go over to a font that you know I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the description below I'm gonna use a font called Thunder so I believe we can just search for it as well so Thunder is an open an open source um, not fully open source actually but I found it on Behance, the display font. I'm gonna go ahead and credit the creator. But we're gonna go ahead and use semi-bold. Had a bit of a small bit of a technical difficulty, um, but we're back at it. So anyways, the type is now in. We got our right uh, typography that you want. We're gonna go ahead now and extrude it by 0.7. And we're gonna duplicate it, Shift D. Grab. It's going to grab automatically, move it up a little bit, and let's just go ahead and um, leave it like that. And now we have our two kind of like parent elements here. You can just rename it by double clicking up here. Now what you're going to do, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the array modifier under generate called array. And we're going to not duplicate it on the x-axis because we'll get that 
I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it on the y-axis by 2.1, I believe. And we're going to just, you can kind of see now we have this array going on. <laughs> Do the same thing with the second one. I don't want to duplicate it on the x-axis. Same exact value, same exact amount of times. Now you can kind of see the train's going by. Now you can kind of see we have this stacked set of text. And what we're going to do next is rotate it. So if you go over here to your object properties, you can rotate it on the Z axis. I believe I like to rotate it rotate by eight for one of the values, one of the parents. We rotate the other one by negative eight. So now you can kind of see here, if we look at it from the front, we have this like interesting kind of like playing around the shadows are going to cast and whatnot. So let's go ahead and generate our arena now. So we're going to make a plane uh, S8 so you can scale it by 8. Go ahead and enter the edit mode. Grab the edge all the way to the back of your settings. Extrude once again. If anyone didn't catch that, it's E to extrude. Control B. We're going to go ahead and scroll our mouse wheel again to get that nice smooth kind of backdrop. And we're going to come out of edit mode and going to scale it on the x axis a little bit. Now, there was a little bit of technical difficulty, and I may have set up most of this stuff already. So, what you were probably going to do is move your camera a little bit. Um, you're going to want to let's just go ahead and extrude this a little bit on the top again. Scale smooth. What you're gonna do? I like to s open up another like split my workspace now, and I like to have one on the camera kind of settings. One thing I didn't cover was, which I did cover two seconds ago. There's something in the viewport display called passive out. I don't know how to pronounce that, but what it'll do is kind of like make sure that you can see what section of your camera is in. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with my camera now, kind of bring it up a little bit. And I set up the camera to more of like an Instagram kind of uh, resolution, which is 1080 by 1350. Once you do that within the output properties, if you go over to your render properties, you will see the engine is probably still set on Eevee for you. We're going to go ahead and switch that to cycles. For everyone that's running on a Mac, things may get a little slow here if you look at the render view, but let's take this one step at a time. <clears throat> the next thing you're probably wondering, oh, how did you get all the lighting like that? I want to introduce you to something called an HDRI. So what you're going to do is click that yellow button under the world properties on the surface tab called color, go to environment texture, and we're gonna go ahead and open up a new window and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna I'm gonna show you where you can go download now for the HDRIs we're gonna head over to a site called Polyhaven and there's a lot of things in here but I'm not gonna dive too deep into textures and models yet click on HDRIs I played around with I'm at this point the world's your oyster I would say I played around with Got the name of it i'm recording this after the tutorial but feel free to play around with anything i specifically for this scene you want something that will give you a little bit of shadow but not too much shadow so maybe something like the shanghai riverside uh you don't need to download it into 4k or 8k x make sure it's x e x r um and that should be good enough to you know give you something so anyways thanks again uh, HDRIs. So now you can kind of see, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of show you in the file view how I like to organize my stuff. I have one folder on my computer for all my Blender stuff. HDRIs kind of bring in this like, <clears throat> essentially they're images that are 360 and they have lighting kind of baked into them already. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and select the Canon 4K. And once we bring that in, once you see rendered, you're gonna see now we have this, this beautiful lighting kind of setup going on here. Um, super slick. <clears throat> Makes things kind of nice. Think your computer may get a little bit slow here. We're gonna want to head and just render the region within the output settings because you don't want it to get any slower. I like to zoom in a little bit. But the next step here is just mess around with the materials. Um, in my my example, I kind of pulled it up a little bit. But let's mess around with the materials here. So. I'm going to split once again, make this into the shader mode, select one of these bad boys, and I'm going to call it text material. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that it's the same for both of these. And now I believe I played around with moving down the roughness a little bit, a little bit of metallic you could go in any direction you want at this point. It's really like not too crazy. You can play with the colors if you want to get real wacky. I like to keep it at like, let's just keep it in a nice little like kind of warmish gray, pinkish. I didn't really play with the metallic too much. Roughness, specular, I brought it all the way down. Uh, This is something too much metallic since we're on this topic. Too much metallic within cycles, the light will bounce around a little too much and it would take forever for you to render it. So I'm going to play around dropping that all the way down. We want it to be nice and like bubbly. Let's just take a look at this. Looks like some of the spacing values are a little bit <coughs> janky. Bring this back, but for now, we'll be okay. Let's bring this back. Hmm. Looking at this, I'll definitely leave this up to your taste um, for now, but <clears throat> you can kind of see we have something kind of going. Let's just bring this up a little bit. Bring this. Oops. You can kind of see we have something going on here now. We have, if you want, we can rotate these a little bit more or a little bit less. But that's pretty much the entire exercise here. Um, <clears throat> feel free to render it out how you typically did it on our last one. There's a bit of a denoise function you can play with. I'm not going to cover that too much. Um, but this is typically the whole tutorial. So, so thank you once again for dropping in. Feel free to let me know if there are any sort of <clears throat> improvements that can be made. You know, this is my second tutorial uh, and this is a lot of fun. It's cool to see what people are creating. And feel free to drop into the Discord where some people are leaving recommendations. They're telling me, hey, Micah, this is cool, or this may be not too cool. Um, but thank you once again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.